I haven't seen you guys in a while. It's been three months. Hi everybody, welcome back to the Nana We're Live YouTube channel. I'm back, I'm alive, I'm still alive. Yeah, welcome back. It's been three months, I haven't seen you guys in a while. I hope you guys have been keeping good. I have. Please go watch my show that I edited. It's not my show, it's a show that I edited in Kokele with OK Wasabi on Open VHD or on EVOD, EVOD. Go watch it, I edited practically the whole season practically a whole season it's a, this is a shameless plug i'm going to do it it's my channel i reserve the right to do so anyways without any further ado it's good to have you guys back i am back and today we are speaking about you guessed it the second season of the biggest south african netflix original series blood and water yes guys and if you haven't seen the review of the first season please go check it out and yeah without any further ado i think let's basically jump into it don't forget to subscribe comment like and share like this video even if you haven't watched it so that other people can see it even if you don't care about it don't dislike it if you don't like it just ignore it and keep on moving let's get into it so i got the opportunity to watch this whole season actually before it actually came out hence why this review is up so early you guys know how i do my reviews i start off with the good and then I jump onto the things that I didn't really like before I close off the review. So I'm gonna do it like that. I'm not gonna change anything. It's a very simple format. Starting off with the good things that I actually did really like about this season. The first thing that I really liked was the fact that they were able to carry the story forward beyond that plot point. We all know that plot point. I'm not gonna spoil it for anybody who hasn't watched the first season, but that, 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 that one plot point that, you know, we were left on a cliffhanger on, on the first season at the end they were able to carry the story and the show on beyond that point which i think is a marvelous and fantastic thing because at first you know in the first season it's almost like that's all the show is about but in the second season they're able to branch out and you know laterally and move forward and that point it, it, you know, whenever that point comes back in you're like oh yeah God, but there's this yeah what's happening here you know you're still interested and you still very much want to know what's going on but then the show is not about that alone anymore the show can be its own thing and can progress and be bigger than you know what we initially thought it would be so i really 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 like that and speaking of moving outwards and laterally uh and not just focusing on one thing they didn't just do that with that they did that also with the characters you know um when it comes to the characters it's no more it's not the bullying show anymore it's not it never was the bullying show but like it, they didn't just focus on bullying only but they started focusing on the other secondary characters or reese chris wendy wade all these other secondary characters some even tertiary characters that were really just like there we start getting you know to actually focus more on them uh then we don't bullying we still do focus on bullying but like on another aspect now and speaking on that like sh light is shed on these characters that we knew some you know some stuff about in the first season but now we get to know more about themselves the characters themselves what motivates these characters what pushes them what drives them and a way that they were actually they did a great job at doing that was with this season focuses a lot on the kids or the high schoolers and their relationships with their parents. You know, if you watch this season, almost every character from the primary characters to the secondary characters, they, they focus a lot on the relationships that they have with, the, or lack thereof, relationships that they have with their parents. I think there was a brilliant and fantastic way of letting us know and shedding more light on the characters and who they are, you know, by showing us that side of what they the, the 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 relationship they have with their parents and it wasn't just just for that when you watch the show and you watch the season you realize all these relationships that they have with their parents tie into who the characters are themselves what pushes them what motivates them what makes them who they are but not only does it do that it also ties into the overall storyline of the show it then literally 
what happens between them and their parents which defines who they are and then defines what they then do which gives us blood and water season two so i really really did love that and then another thing i want to give a point to you know the team of blood and water two is introducing new characters there are a couple of characters that were introduced a few characters that were introduced in this season but also speaking mostly on the young cast not on the old cast on the young cast they did really do do a great job in introducing fresh faces you know faces, faces we've never seen before there's a new character they introduce in this season who plays the character of sam and yeah apparently it's his first time role and you know we always speak about open up the industry but you know it's one thing to speak about it and it's another thing to actually do it and if you really look at blood and water and you go to season one you'll see that it's something that they've been doing i did actually mention in my last review that a lot of the young cast we, it's fresh faces you know faces faces we've never seen before the old cast maybe we may know them yes but the new guys you know the young guys we've never seen most of them not all of them but most of them and you know hats off to you guys at blood and water hats off to you guys at gambit films and netflix yeah those are really the things that i really really did like about the season of blood and water moving over to the things that i wasn't really a fan of i did mention that i did love how they've managed to grow the show outwards you know in different directions beyond that just one plot point uh, but in trying to do so there are certain things from the first season that they really didn't do a great job at polishing up or fixing or making better and in this season you know those things start to you know it starts to split at the seams here and there the show has gone to a point where it's starting to become predictable and when i say predictable i'm speaking mostly footy on the side of upuleng more than anyone whenever she's setting off on her side quest whenever she's going on her investigation you know her sherlock holmes type of stuff it starts becoming very uninteresting it starts becoming very um, unpredictable and because the stakes are just so low because it goes to you know the first season i said in the first season everybody's complaining about bullying being the sherlock holmes type of character blah blah but i don't really have a problem with that i didn't i really didn't in the first season but in this season it's gone to a point where it's like okay now it's just removing all the stakes from everything that she does you know she gets into extremely dangerous situations tricky situations situations where you're like how you know what's the logic or if there isn't logic like how are you going to get out of this there's no easy way to get out of this without you know sacrificing something and she barely has to she barely has to sacrifice anything she barely has to pay the price for any of the things she does beyond just a confrontation here and there and that really removes all the stakes from the side quest that she does it removes the stakes overall from the show itself and because of that because you know that every time Pulen gets herself in some sort of you know tricky messy situation she's easily just going to get out of it it then starts making the show very predictable and then makes the show very uninteresting but also at the rate that they do these things like the side quest that she goes on and and at the at the level of trickiness that these side quests are on the show starts becoming ridiculous you know at some point it starts being very ridiculous because you just like ah, this is you know i know this is fiction i know this is not real this is television but like this is just not plausible in any way shape or form sometimes i don't know maybe they might be going for humor you know they might be trying to go for humor and that's the tricky thing also with humor is the fact that if you don't nail it it becomes ridiculous it becomes cringy it becomes and un- un- you know you, you start not taking that thing seriously and when it comes to you know i said the show elaborated more on the secondary characters and did a great job at making us connect with those characters this season didn't do a great job with bling this season i could not care about bling this season she's the least interesting part of the season every time she's on screen every time we're going on her quest that's just like the the slowest part of the show it just drags it's it's, it's like okay guys you know and it's it's because of these things that i mentioned because the stakes have been you know basically thrown away we've gone to a point where it's it's gone to a level of not being so you know the 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 suspension of disbelief is out the window gone you know so and that for me is really really a, a big thing because bling is the main character at the end of the day so even if we do focus on these other interesting characters that we have which 
bravo to you guys. We still have to take a little bit of care when it comes to this main character, Pella, um, especially with these Sherlock Holmes -y side quests that she does have. Another point, guys, is I'm not really a fan of the acting, you know. Um, the first season, you know, I was like, it's the first season, they're getting to know the characters, but we're still there, you know. I said, the show did a great job at moving outwards and branching out, but it didn't do a good job at fixing some of last season's problems. And last season's problems were the acting wasn't great, you know. The, there are certain actors here and there who do a great job. The actor who plays the character of Uzama, the actor who plays the character of Wade. Natasha does a decent job with the character of Wendy. You know, there are certain characters who do what they need to do. And keep in mind, guys, mostly when I'm speaking also, I'm speaking mostly on the young cast, I'm not necessarily speaking on the older cast. Those characters are still, you know, as sharp and as good as they need to be. The other actors, like, they still haven't gotten used to um, their characters, still haven't settled into their roles. And it's the second season by now. I personally feel like I shouldn't feel like you're still acting. Um, and that really, for me, that really just, you know, kind of does impact the show. Because, like, first season, it's cool. Second season, no. And look, granted, it was during, the show was shot during COVID. So there were a lot of restrictions on set. There was a lot of adjusting to new regulations and making sure that, you know. So maybe that might have made the actors a little bit uncomfortable. But at the end of the days, the guys are professionals. And I'm not supposed to be able to see through that or even even have to even think about that as the viewer sitting at home watching it. It still feels very much like this is the first time that they're doing it. Not really a fan of that. What's the next point? Um, Sorry. Directing, I didn't mention directing, yes. The next point I want to mention is, I want to say, I'm not going to say it's the writing, I'm going to say it's the directing. Um, when it comes to directing, specifically two things, acting, but specifically the second point also is the directing of scenes, the building of scenes. The scenes themselves written, I wouldn't say are a problem. It's when it's time for them to be translated onto screen, where I'd be like, not this is this is not good you know there'll be scenes that the minute the scene starts and it's being set up you already know where the scene is going and these are not like common scenes or day-to-day -day, you know what type of stuff uh, these are specific scenes you know scenes that want to have reveals or payoffs you know very high reveals and payoffs itself as a scene and as an idea is not a bad scene it's just how you guys went about directing and shooting it that just it was ruined the minute it started and once again the problem is not the scenes the problem is not the things that are being explored or we're being told it is how they were being executed that then becomes a problem for me at the very, at, at least and by the way these things that i'm mentioning in this review guys i want you guys to know these are things i had problems with there are a lot of other things I, I, I had problems with, but they're not even, you know, problems enough for me to want to mention. You know, they can be a problem to another person and that's cool. But I feel like, yeah, the show, the show is very much still watchable, you know, even if you, 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 you're aware and conscious of all these things. But apart from that, overall, guys, I would say Blood and Water Season 2 was a good season. For me, the most important thing was it moving beyond that one plot point that we were all hung up over. And the fact that it's able to stand on its own beyond that tells me that it's a show that if they wanted to carry on, they could carry on almost for as long as they wanted to or for as long as they can. Um, so for me, that's a fantastic and marvelous job when it comes to that. But I enjoyed the season. It was a very good season. It did great in things it didn't do in the first season but it didn't do good in the things that it did bad in the first season. If that makes any sense, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, that's basically about it, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, and share. Um, if you like this video, please like it. If you didn't like it, please ignore it. Act like you never even saw it. Forget about it. Go on and live your life. It is heritage day to day. It is Shaga day to day. It is bright day to day. Go have a lovely day. Uh, watch this review, watch the show. Comment down in the se comment section below. Don't forget to follow me at Evil Ewa Nakne, which is Nano Alive, the other way around. Don't forget to watch all the episodes of the Real Recognized Real podcast. We're in episode six. Still more episodes coming, guys. I was just a bit busy with the show that I would like for you guys to go watch. Go to your Play Store or your App Store right now and download EVOD, 30 rands a month. Go watch OK Wasabi being funny and collecting people's money. I edited that show. And other people edited the show too, guys. But like, you know, I edited the show. <laughs> I'm joking. Anyways, guys, that's basically about it. Um, I'll see you on the next video. I don't know what's, what it's going to be. You guys are just going to see it, you know.
Scopi Pape Potreni Fagum Sopo Aspongo Coco Fisu Pambiloto Nego May and Bilo Yasente Wim Pura Pura Salatende Vesia Sasnoka Lapelokshin I just pray I just pray will be